Hey guys, and welcome to another video from the team here at BlenderTech.com. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe for more Blender, Unity 3D, and programming videos. The team tries to add at least one quality video a day. And lastly, don't forget to remember, create your way. So today we're going to be looking at armatures, or rigs as they're called in Unity. And I'm going to show you how to make your rigs easier to pose using the method used to create like fingers, tentacles, basically anything with a lot of bones that would move if the end of a armature changes. Like if a foot moved, you wanted the rest of the leg to move is, is the idea I'm getting at. This is called inverse kinematics. And so I'm basically going to show you just very basically how it's set up. You might call it something like auto posing or clapping I've heard before, but uh, technically it is inverse kinematics. But inverse kinematics can be used for more things than just this. And there's there's different ways to do this effect than just using inverse kinematics. You can also um, add a lot of action bone constraints, but inverse kinematics is the fastest way to get this effect. So let me show you in the let me show you the effect I'm looking for in this rig character I have imported into Blender. It's available from Blend Swap. Just search for Pilot. It's a low poly fighter pilot by Eric 90 MX, and I'll show you what I'm talking about, and then I'll show you how to do it. So basically, um, if I select his foot here, you see if I grab it, his whole leg comes with it. So that saves me from having to go and pose every single bone in his leg instead it's all in this particular one he uses actions he doesn't use inverse kinematics i think he's done a lot better job that way but inverse kinematics is an easier way to do it so yeah as you can see if i grab the foot it takes the uh the whole leg with it and it's properly weighted so it also has a very good effect i believe you can also take the torso and you can see kind of everything comes with it so it's uh it's kind of clamped to everything in this uh in this case and where this comes into real effect like i said it's in tentacles and fingers so he's got it set up where okay i can grab my hand and the whole thing comes with it but if you go to each individual finger okay each finger has a bunch of bones in them, three bones in them. But he also has, what would you call it, kind of like a parent bone where if you rotate it, it automatically curls the finger to it. So I'm not going to get fully into this, but I'm going to show you the basic idea behind this and how to make your your characters easier to rig, pose, and animate. So I've got this file open. This is kind of the end result that we'll get. We have kind of this parent bone here, and we have kind of this finger I've created with one, two, three, four bones in it. And then basically when you grab this parent bone, the the finger follows it, and the other bones, they deform and follow it. Not 100% as they should because I just used automatic weights. I didn't weight this manually to be proper, but you get the basic idea behind it. You can see how the bones... The bones change when I when I um, move the parent bone and you can scale it down it doesn't matter it'll, it'll still have the same effect so I'm gonna undo all that and show you how to do this in fact I can even turn on screencast keys once I get back to my starting point all right right there now don't follow my example make sure you name your bones what they actually are but i've just made this up really quick just an ex, ex just for an example the kind of idea behind this like i said is to use this parent bone and have all these bones be affected just by moving this one single bone in your armature so i've already created the um i've already i've already parented the cube to this armature with automatic weights uh, like I said, it's just got these kind of automatic weights. They're not very good. In fact, they suck. But I, if I wanted to, if I was going to make a kind of finger animation, I would go and I would go into pose mode. Let me select my armature here. I would go into pose mode. And yes, I can go and I can, I can set every single bone exactly how I want it when I'm animating it. But this can take forever it can lead to better results overall but it takes a heck of a lot of time and if you're not going for a 
super 110% realistic animation, um, then really, yeah, you don't need that. So here's just one way to make it quicker using inverse kinematics. So what I would do is I would select my first bone here, and then you go to the bone constraints tab. It's this little tab with a bone and a chain, and you add a bone constraint, and in the other model, the the uh, fighter pilot model, he used an action, and he just set the target to to the main bone over and over and over again, and I I didn't quite figure out how he did it because it's all set up in Spanish, um, so I'm not gonna get that exact effect. I might do that in a later uh, video, but I am gonna show you how to use inverse kinematics because they make that what you saw when I showed you kind of in the beginning here possible. So you choose inverse kinematics, then you just select a target. My target is going to be my armature 001, which is this one right here. And since it only has one bone, all I have to do is select the first bone. And you can see we've got a change already. So if I go ahead and take my main bone here and grab it, you can see, okay, it's doing something, but it's only affecting that one bone so far. So what I need to do is I need to take the second bone and add another bone constraint, an inverse kinematic. Same deal, armature 001, so the parent bone, and then just select the bone that's in use. And then we go to the next one, and keep going, inverse kinematics. Ooh, I was gonna turn on screencast keys. Not that I'm really using any keys, but bone. And then we go to the final bone in the finger and we add a bone constraint and inverse kinematic our target is our parent armature and our target bone is the only bone in that armature uh, iterations is kind of just how well it will calculate it so if I change it to, to like one it'll really not do a very quality job but a higher number does a uh, higher quality in calculating it you can hover over it and see the maximum number of solving iterizations so it's basically how well it calculates I'm not gonna go into the into the uh, details here I just wanted to very quickly show you this so you take your main bone now and as you can see the entire finger uh, follows it like I said my weights are way off so this isn't realistic at all and it doesn't really get the full effect I want as you can see this could really increase um, your efficiency in posing things. So this is just a quick example of how inverse kinematics work. Um, it's great for legs, it's great for arms, it's great for fingers in certain instances, especially when you get your weights down properly and you get that effect. I showed you the finger curl in the fighter pilot. But yeah, this is a great way to um, get your animations posed a lot faster i will open another file that is f uh it's a file from a book that i've been reading so he's got this full little character rigged and this little animation for it to walk. And this was the chapter, but if I turn on octahedral, you can see the bone set up here. So this bone right here, it's extreme, uh, I'm in object mode, I even pose mode. This, this, I guess it's not a bone, but it's, uh, it's an empty. Um, how it's set up is basically, as you can see, the entire leg comes with it when I when I grab it so you can see that it's affecting the entire leg at once so that's the same kind of effect and in this instance he uses inverse kinematics for this so it doesn't necessarily have to be to a bone it can be to an empty like this is an empty circle here but it shows you the idea and if I grabbed this, uh, no, uh, which one is it? Oh, yeah, I think he has it for the arms, too. Yeah, so the arms do the same kind of thing. And I believe you can go in, yeah, in any direction, really. I'm just in, I mean, you can, so it, once you, when you get your weight set up properly, this can really, really, um, make things so much easier for setting up your, your posing of your characters. 
Yeah, but anyways, I just wanted to show you some more rigging information and how inverse kinematics can make it easier to set up character rigs. So that's all for now. Thanks for watching from the team here at BlenderTech.com. Again, that's BlenderTEK.com. If you enjoyed this video and learned something, please like it. And don't forget to subscribe for more Blender, Unity 3D, and programming videos. We now offer hard copies of our videos, so if you'd like a copy to download onto your computer, just let us know and we'll upload it to our server and you can watch it later in the media or play of your choice. If you dislike this video for some reason, don't just leave. Instead, leave a comment or email the team at info at blendertech.com about what you did not like. We received some emails with uh, good responses so far, no negatives, so that's a good thing. Um, we also take requests for tutorials, so let us know if there's something you want or want to see more content of. So see you next time, and remember, create your way.